Greetings to all. As you can see by the title, we are going into the ancestral mothers. There is one particular mother that summons me. <laughs> However, she looked to see that there was many others within the collective mothers um, that also would like to come forward to communicate. However, she will be my lead um, speaker outside of my guides and outside of my higher self. Um, okay, and just for those that it may resonate for, the one particular young lady, you do know this resonates for you. Um, the mother's name is Caroline. That will be the main lead for the ancestral mothers. I will be taking my time with this to communicate the messages, okay? You may also see me close my eyes and go into a trance state as well um, to collect or see any type of images or pictures or things that they may want to show or reveal to me. I am going to use all of my um, clairs, okay? to tap into this energy. And my tapping into my clairs requires different things for me, okay? I also have a water bowl as well for um, any scrying, just in case someone may want to, they, their element may be water where they can actually transmit the message through the water as well. I have a whole bunch of different energies that are on the table everywhere <laughs> because I'm not sure how this is going to go. I will be pulling out some zodiacs or some houses that represents the zodiac um, as well as um, some characteristics of the mother, okay? Also, um, when I was tapping in, there's a mother here that is actually not your birth mother, okay? For some of the individuals within the collective. This mother is actually like an auntie or this mother is someone, well, we can say grandma or whoever, a foster mother um, that actually took you in, okay? So, this is still general, okay, because this is for the collective. Please just take the pieces that are resonant for you, that speaks to you directly. Leave the rest for someone else, for their pieces, for them to collect and receive, okay? <clears throat> I am Mama So. I come with Grandma Spider to transmit the messages for the ancestral mothers at this time. I'm first going to get some energy of the mothers, okay, that are coming forward. Oh, one moment, I forgot to put that gem on. One moment, fam. I'm glad I looked over when I did because my myself forgot to put a crystal placement on her, okay? Because I had to go to the little girl's room. <laughs> When I was first tapping in, there was an image that came, well, actually there was two images <clears throat> that came before me. This can either will be the image of them or this can be actually your image. It is not very clear, but it is a hair, deta hair detail, okay? The first detail that I received were, was like some glasses that were not quite square or not quite circular circular also i saw um a reddish brown hair 
that was curly or like some quirky, like some really deep loopity type curls of some sort that I couldn't really tell if maybe that was just like maybe a wig or maybe some extensions or something of the sort. Um, or that's just how they styled their natural hair. Then there was another image where this person was a fair skin or Caucasian, um, phenomelanin, and they had very long, straight, ash blonde, brownish ash, brown blonde hair that came maybe to the waist, and they had a bang that came above their uh above their brow they were slender okay that's just the two images they had that hippie type um hobo not hobo yeah hobo bohemian type um energy vibe with them as well okay I do still come with my false flaws, hiccups, and all interruptions, irritations, and imperfections too, okay? Now, okay. Ancestral mothers characteristics that you would like to present okay one that was a queen of pentacles <laughs> she was solid she was strong on her dean she was good in her craft it's almost like she was a miracle worker it's like i'm hearing everything i touch damn near turn to gold she got a little sass with her a little pizzazz, a little charisma. Then we have the eight of hearts. Um, hmm. This mother, she she knew how to feed the soul. Okay, the stomach. She was going in through the stomach. She was. She knew how to cook. She knew how to burn the house down, make that house stink in those good ways, in the way they would speak. You know that kitchen be stanking like yeah some good effervescence here she had plenty to share plenty to give it's almost as if the energy that i'm picking up from this here with this eight of um hearts which will be cups see the dinner plates it's like she would cook and throw down like feast style and she would just invite people over or she would call the people from the church or whatever it's just to come and get a plate the neighbors you know whatever just to come and get a plate she was very of service of service but her service was towards the stomach the pleasing of the taste buds okay one more all right okay we have a nature lover we have a nature lover she went out into nature because things within life, within her mind, was so very painful. Things were distorted for her. I'm hearing this mother say there was a level of Alzheimer or dementia at a certain phase within her life. I'm also seeing a mother that could have possibly had cirrhosis of the liver or some type of um, liver disease. This is also showing a heart condition as well. I'm also seeing a mother here with, um, I'm seeing gang green, like something a part um, of the limbs um, became very um, infected, very painful departure, I hear. At the bottom, the five of diamonds. There's many here. There's an array of mothers here. 
those of you that seek and search know that your mother is near. What is described if it is not present, know that your mother is here. And I say this because they want you to know that all the mothers that are present now are still your mothers. It's your mother too. It's your mother too. Because I'm hearing her say that because I am within the universal cosmos, I have returned back into the ashes, into the filaments of the mycelium. All right, let's get some zodiacs. These zodiacs can be yours, okay? Or it can be theirs, okay? I pulled a few out of my um, star gaze. So, all right. Zodiacs or houses. Leo. Okay. Okay. Caroline wants you to know Leo. Okay. Sistern. Leo, and of course, other sisters that come to the channel, Leo, okay? You saw that pop out like that, right? Rewind if you have to, watch watch the cards and how it flew out. Leo, she is present, strong. You know, I, I explained she's very powerful. She's very demanding, but very soft and gentle within her demands. And that's why I'm showing up, okay? to do my part. She is very loving, okay? She is extraordinary. She is very extraordinary, but she had some hidden fires and some hidden truths that you don't know, okay? Then we have the fire element. Yo, fire, fire, fire. Okay, okay. We got some dramatic, passionate women, mothers here, very assertive, you know, very courageous, daredeviling, daredevils, go getters, especially with this, uh, the one that I described in regards to um, damn near everything she touched would turn to gold. You know, she was about her dean, very good with her craft, you know, and. I'm also hearing that some, um, those that had that painful situation, this may be, um, uh, being that they was constantly on the go, on the move, they didn't pay attention to the signs, um, before things got out of hand. I need to move this. Put this here. My hands are actually getting dry. Pardon me. My hands are getting dry. Let's go ahead and get this first and then I'll get me some stuff for my hands. Okay. Seventh house, eleventh house, Aquarius and Libra. Aquarius. Libra. Can I actually get the zodiacs? I don't mind the houses, but Capricorn. Last one. Here. Taurus. Capricorn, that's that, that's that, that go-getter, that planner, that strategizer, about that money, about that bag, that giving of food, Taurus, good food, you know, Taurus loves some good food, you know, very um, sensory, yeah, sensory, you know, the senses, pleasing of the senses, ninth house, Sagittarius. Yeah, so those are the zodiacs that we have. I'm going to leave them out on the table 
just in case there's something that wants to communicate further through these cards. However, I am truly seeing that this airy season is going to bring in something for you, especially within this North Node, um, Chiron and Aries and the many different things that are taking place within that house um, at the time of these eclipse, Leo fire energy, okay? With these eclipse, the solar eclipse that's about to come on April the 8th. Oop. Okay. What would you like to tell them? So let's get some thoughts. I will paraphrase to make these messages fit for the situation. This is my divinely guided messages of love. That is for masculine feminine energy. But this is more for those that are present here physically in their bodies, in their vehicles. So I'm going to translate it according to those that are not in their physical vehicles. I need some lotion. Yeah, my hands are quite. <laughs> Somebody said ashy. They're not ashy, but they dry. Oh, yeah. And I had an incident today, too, with some bleach. <clears throat> And I didn't have any gloves on. So that's an added factor in what's drying out my skin today. Leo. <laughs> okay. Let's get that in there real good. Because that's shea butter. Those of you that know, shea butter. She thick and creamy. All right, some thoughts you would like to share, ancestral mothers. Daughters and sons, sons and daughters. What is the thought? What is it that you would like to share with the collective individuals, ancestral mothers? Unfinished business. Anything else? Irreplaceable. Here. First, we have unfinished business. It says, we still have things to resolve and discuss. Okay, so earlier there were secrets, things that still weren't told, unspoken truths. But now that they're on the other side, they're really needing you to um, connect through seeking about unfinished business to get some clarity within the dynamics of the mother relationship and the lifestyle the the rearing and coming up with leo also being the house of the children the fifth house of the children um and how the relationships and how the influences on the outside of there's something within the inquiry there's an inquiry and this may also explain um, the uncle and inquire, to inquire the uncle um, for my particular sister and um, Catherine, I mean, Caroline. Okay, Catherine, maybe someone's name, but Caroline um, has been talking about that this has come up twice in our conversations. Um, this is specific sister, but this still can resonate. Um, 
in inquiring about an uncle. Unfinished business. There's still some things that wants to be revealed. There's still some truths to be revealed. They can be revealed and irreplaceable. The way you love can never be matched. Hmm. Oh, that hits so tender to my heart right here. This is specific Caroline at this time, daughter to daughter. She is wanting you to know that even though she has, she transitioned and you were at such a young age, there has been certain things within you <clears throat> that has had unfinished business. And she wants you to know that you are irreplaceable and that she loves you very much. And she also gives an apology that she wasn't able to be there to support you <clears throat> physically. Oh, my heart feels, feels like it wants to jump out of my chest. This is specifically for you, sister. But my other collective, there's a message in it also for you because if it is me, then it is we. If it is I, then it is you. Because we are all intertwined. So just because I'm speaking the Pacific for this person does not deny you if this is your story. Know that. I see how you move around the house and how you work and do your little twerk. <clears throat> I hear, <clears throat> stop giving so much of yourself. And I would like to say, to who? <laughs> stop giving so much of yourself to who? To your family. beyond, far beyond. Commit to your goals. That is the commitment to your family, your physical family. Pursue your goals. Because the goals in which you pursue is what is for your family to leave forth the legacy that you desire to leave for your children so that they do not have to suffer. The reason for this is a makeup within space and not experiencing and having the physical mother present in your life. This is an inner child wound that is still carried. Seven years old, 10 years old, 11 years old, eight years old. Caroline says, you already know your age. And I'm also hearing six years old for some of the collective individuals that are present. I have a fan and being that I've been packing, I cannot retrieve or find it. She's packed away that one of my sisters from up north sent to me. And I wish I could have it right now. I need to drink some water, fam.
overcompensating overcompensation is why the fear or <clears throat> the overdoing for the family and mainly for the children is because you did not have the company or the longevity of life to have and hold and experience and share things with your physical mother. Take a look, go deeper, look at your plate and look at how you eat from others' plates and consume more than what you can chew. Allow yourself to become more focused and fear not yourself. What happened to you will not happen to them. Take heed, take heed. Here, be all that you can be. Because it's for the greatest purpose for them. I don't think I can sit in this energy any longer, but they want me to be in this energy a little longer. <sighs> I just don't want to be taking up no camera time while I'm just because this is really um, a deep <clears throat> uncovering, especially for those of you that have lost your mothers at a young age. And for those of you that may not have, I'm hearing some of you may not have lost your mothers at a young age, but this is where the foster cares or being an orphan, being adopted um, comes in when this actual division or separation came or happened in your life and how you are overcompensating. Um, for those of you that this is not children, this is overcompensation within your social groups, within who you hang out with, who you work with, um, who you share the most of your time and give the most of your energy and attention to. Do know that when messages come out, they always have multiple folds, okay? Everything has a multiple fold, a ripple effect. It carries out a current, okay? But you have to allow the wave of the current to come in to hit your shore for you to, by opening your mind to be within a higher conscious level to see how this fits into your life story or your life situation. I think I'm going to pause for a moment, okay, fam? Because there's another direction that they want me to go, <clears throat> that I'm desired to go in. I'm desired of the etheric of they to go in of the ancestral mothers. But I want this moment just to pass and pass me by just a little bit so I can kind of function and snap back. Okay, I had to get it together. And while I was getting it together, um, I also <clears throat> was hearing that you are the sugar to my pie. And then I said, well, can you rephrase that? The apple of my eye? 
some of you may have a strong craving for sugar <clears throat> or a strong dislike for sugar. And the dislike of sugar is because of the separation anxiety. Um, the apples, some of you may have a symbol or a emblem, amulet, or something with an apple. Um, because it reminds you of a particular space or place within time past from present. Then um, what was also coming in, in regards to the overcompensation, that there's two perspectives that the ancestral mothers want me to view this. Miss Caroline wants me to view this for the collective individuals. We, they're, she's showing me the South Node and the North Node, okay? And she's giving me specifics, yes. And you can either or have a North Node in Cancer and a South Node in Capricorn. The South Node in Capricorn is asking you to release the things of, um, how can I say this? Um, the hard working, you know, environment within, you know, being so disciplined or so strategic um, within your plans and strategy. This is also the workaholic type energy. Um, and your north node of your cancer is asking you to embrace being more nurturing to children or to others, okay? And then the opposite of that will be the north node in Capricorn and the south node in Cancer, which means the south node in Cancer, you have already gone through the, you've already done, that's the comfort zone and being over protective or overdoing within nurturing of others or to the children or family, okay? However, this is for your situation um, that you're being asked to step into your Capricorn energy and being more um, towards your career, towards your purpose, towards the things that you want to in, uh, incorporate your, you know, within your goals, your plans, your wishes towards humanity, okay, that is for the greater good of everyone. And for you to kind of step back from the south node of that motherly smother type energy and really pursue and embrace the north node. This is also what was given to was that this is why some of the collective individuals, why mother departed at such a young age, okay? And this is one of the things um, of this unfinished business that is desired uh, to be discussed at this present moment. Um, whew. Yeah. Because this is part of the things that needs to be learned to cultivate you and get you into the placement and where you need to be within the time that we are in today. So that's being said. So now they want to go into cycles, into the sacred cycle, and we will go a little further. Yes, I already said this will be lengthy. I do do private readings, okay? You can hit me up in my email. The information will be down in the description box for your personal, personal, personal messages.
and also for guided assistance to help you within your growth and your development and your healing process so that you can reach your fullest potentials. All right. What is the sacred cycle you would like to bring to the collective individuals? Sacred cycle. Okay. Empress. Wild one. <laughs> All right, Leo. Leo is the wild one. Okay, we have Empress. Yeah, stand in your rulership. The cycle. Some of you are really starting to come into that. That's that Leo energy as well. Seeing how you can be more um, expressive, you know, being within your power. Some of you actually, too, the cycle that you're in is, you know, being more playful, but to yet still um, firm. Yeah, still firm. This is really um, the cycle and really uh, in what they want you to come into, which they want you to embody is the love of your possessions, the love of what you possess in um, why you were actually created to be here within this time. This is really looking at, you know, um, the areas also in where you have become too comfortable and see how you can readjust this comfortability to um, actually work towards the things that you need to embrace within your power. And did I show the card? I don't know. Then we have Wild One. I'm telling you, if that's not Leo all day, but this is also giving me the energy of the Phoenix rising, the rising of your soul through the balance and allowing the change and going into the things that have been painful and becoming more disciplined to learn the wisdom through the life's experiences and being able to actually fertilize your earth and fertilize the things that are also standing upon your earth in what you actually touch and interact with on an everyday. This is what brings in true balance and true love, okay? Justice, fairness. This cycle is really rising up becoming vulnerable with the self, true vulnerability. I have to show it again. True vulnerability. That's the cycle because that wild one is actually in the wild one, the way it's being expressed to me is like, that's what's being within that North Node energy and where you're being asked to embrace, that's really going to get you where you really need to be to obtain the things that you desire that are practical, that are rational, that are logical, that are fulfilling, that are very creative. We're going to get a concluding message after this. At least that's how it feels to, to me. Mama Soul Lily, okay? Come on now, I didn't even have my hands on the deck. Oh, come on. No? Shadow, the shaman. Yeah, 
You got to go into the shadow to become the enlightened shaman. And this is what the ancestral mothers is bringing forward. Shadow work. For the freeing of your mind, body, soul, emotions, and spirit. Okay. Shadow work. To become the enlightened shaman. To become the healer of the ages. To become that diamond that was now that is now found because you dug in the rough and you found the rare diamond that is you, the individual. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Animals spirit animals okay 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 i'm just trying to go to those roses they think no 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 like no 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 okay caroline <laughs> no 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 okay animal spirit <laughs> See, they got me all, they got me all twisted. They got mama so all twisted, y'all. Grandma Spider got me twisted too. Okay. This is going to bring in, I'm hearing a new identity of self, a new awareness of, within the identity of self and others the relationship between the first house and the seventh house check to see what's in your first and second seventh house that can actually pinpoint to you as well as this eclipse energy the solar eclipse that's next on april the 8th which is the new moon in aries we have the antelope spirit. Life is speeding up. It will be. Well, it is definitely that. And individually, collectively, globally, universally, vibrationally, earthwise. Yes, yes. But individually within the individual lives, as you go deeper and you do the shadow work and you really look at the things and see the true values behind what was spoken, then that's when things will start to unfold. Because you have to start. You have to hit that bomb, right? That ter ter um, terrain to break it apart, the bomb to break it apart to go find that diamond, right? And when you find that diamond, then the vibration of you pops up. And then when you pop up, then that's when the ultrasound waves or the ocean starts to move. Okay? The antelope. Card numbers that. Two. Balance. Balance. Oh, we're not going reverse. Parrot spirit. Watch your words. Watch your words. These words are whether they're internally to the self or externally to the self, to others. Watch your words. Be cautious of your words. I'm also hearing listen to the words. Listen to the words that others are mimicking or communicating outwardly to you. I'm also hearing, listen to the words within your body as well, okay? The koala spirit, spirit has a plan. Yes, the ancestral mothers have a plan, okay? The ancestor mothers right there, look at that. They have a plan, okay? And they are really um, here to assist right now for your spiritual growth and development, for the soul evolution to assist within the breaking of ger generational curses and past lives, you know, that's just been all out wrong. 
This is truly spiritual change and foundational change here, family. I'm hearing this is desired to allow or bring the towers down for the reconstruction that is needed. I heard now you can go to Rose. Okay, now I can go to Rose. Okay. Let's get your Rose concluding message. And I will read from the book. Yeah, so anyone that desires a ancestral mother reading or ancestral reading, you know, mediumship reading, you know, do hit me up, put in the subject box what it would be for, and I will get right back to you and let you know how to proceed from there. I'm still in the process of working on my website and so many things and being a mom of five it's a little jimble jumble but i um finally have a team member that is able to accommodate and help me um to get things moving a little faster okay all right what is this concluding message ancestral mothers that you would like to bring forward caroline communicate with the others of the all of we in what we are concluding with for the divine. Open, say yes, expand through the extremes, the wild one. Trust life. Trust what is, I'm hearing, trust what is being spoken, what is being enlightened or, yeah, being enlightened or illuminated, illuminated for you at this time. Um, for those that this message actually resonates with and for. And say yes to the deeper dive and the look within what was spoken earlier into the shadows and looking within the um, North Node and South Node energy of the Cancer and Capricorn poles, okay? Yeah. Extremes. And we have the Fertile Void. Didn't I say something about fertile? I said something. There was something said about the fertile, the, about the fertile ground, the fertilizer, the something. I don't know. Something I said. I don't know. But it says, enter inner wisdom, rest, patience, potency, secret beginnings, unfinished business. I said something earlier about secrets. Look at that. The fertile void. This is the ancestral mothers. The fertile void. That's the collective, the interwovenness of this message as a whole. But what's being asked here, be patient with yourselves. Allow yourselves to go through the process so that you can heal and go through the process and going and looking at, you know, uh, the beginning aspects of this message that was spoken and really allow yourself to recover yourself and bring back yourself so that you can step into your rulership leadership, power of your purpose. The fertile void. I just want to read that. Let's see what page number that is. Seventy-six.
Mama so can't have see them. They so light bright. Um, not light bright. The opposite of light bright. We're reading fertile grounds. I mean, fertile void. This is a very auspicious card. It holds the potent golden seeds of a new beginning and the aftermath of an end. We're calling to have patience and enter a state of deep rest, repair, rejuvenation and acceptance to let a part of our lives or even who we once were metamor metamorphically die in order to see, sprout, bud, and bloom again. There's often, there's often a letting go, a grief or mourning involved, a death of self, or what once was the ending of things that were once important relationships jobs identities ways of being the fertile void acts that we honor any endings to begin again it's a critical part of growth and new isn't possible without it in the card, you can see the golden seed cradled in the dark, fertile womb of the soil. It's easy to misplace this phase of growth as one, as one where nothing much is happening. But beneath the surface of the winter soil, things have never been more active, wild one. Winter is a fa phase of init initiation, renewal, and rebirth. When we're going through a period of inter inner winter, we experience this too. We metamorphically go underground by coming to a standstill and allowing ourselves to recover and rest said something about recovery we don't realize it but this is the most important part of our growth and it takes faith and surrender to do it trust the sureness of the soil the new is being woven without you having to micromanage every move trust the sureness of the soil be cradled by the great mystery. This is a very tender and powerful time. Soul inquiry. How can you surrender into the great mystery? I do say, my beautiful souls, you already know what to do. I'm Mama Soul Lily and Grandma Spider. And I would like to say thank you to everyone that is present that has come to this video to receive the message of the ancestral mothers. Until next time, I shall.